Okay. In this lecture, we are going to introduce two new things, which is called the torque and the movement of inertia. But let's go back and recall that according to Newton's law, we know that sum of forces equals mass times acceleration. And this was the case when our uh, variable was displacement, that we were talking in terms of displacement. That is, we meant uh, if displacement was mentioned as x, or let's say mentioned as r, is a displacement vector, then v was dr over dt, the instantaneous velocity and acceleration was dv over dt. So the um, so m a was equal to sum of m a was equal to the sum of forces. And we already have discussed the diff the analogy between the equation of kinematics for a linear si for a rectilinear system. This is called a rectilinear system. When things are moving in a straight line, that is, there is a motion, displacement, and between the angular system, we already have this uh, described the analogy between r, um, v. Uh, a and theta um, v is omega and alpha. Now sometimes we use x instead of r, but that does not mean we are moving in the x direction. Sometimes people use r and x in an exchanging way, where x is a displacement vector, not necessarily only in the x direction. So please don't get confused here. Okay, so we have the analogy. So what is the analogous equation for this equation for what is the analogous equation for this one in the in the angular system? Right? This is in the rectilinear rectilinear system. The analogous equation in the angular system will be actually will is is um, T equals I alpha. This is the analogous equation. Now, before we discuss anything else, first we we sh we have noticed that we are putting an arrows on a omega and alpha. Now we haven't done that so far. So why an arrow? Which means this in it's a vector. Well, actually, uh, we say angular velocity, which means this it's a vector. Velocity is a vector, and similarly, angular acceleration. That acceleration is a vector. So uh, how does how does direction comes in picture here? So this is how the direction of angular velocity and alpha are defined. Let's say you have a circle or a disk, and this disk is moving with an angular velocity of omega. So, to find the direction, what you do is curl your fingers around the direction of motion of omega, and the direction of your thumb tells you the, um, the direction of omega. And this is called right hand, because you use the right hand thumb rule. You can look up online what does it mean and right hand thumb rule so for this guy right according to right hand thumb rule the velocity omega has direction which is coming out of plane similarly this guy has angular velocity which is going in the plane right okay what about the direction of angular acceleration well for angular acceleration um, let's write here if omega is speeding up which means increasing in increasing in um, magnitude which means d omega or dt is positive, which means increasing, then uh, alpha has the same direction as omega. So for this guy, alpha is coming out 
you have different case in which the disk may be moving like this if omega is speeding up well it's the same thing is this omega is speeding up then d omega dt is positive and alpha is the same direction as omega where in this case you know omega is going down so alpha is also going in it's same as acceleration you see if you are moving with this velocity v and if v is slowing down which means decreasing you know acceleration is in the backward direction similarly if v is going in is in this direction and is slowing down then you know acceleration is in this direction right just using the equation of kinematics same same thing here okay so now the direction of alpha has been defined what is i well i is called moment of inertia and tau is called torque okay these are new things but this, this question is sort of similar to this one I mean to certain extent not exactly the same but you can certainly draw analogies between these two uh, well uh, so we need to first of all define T torque and I so let's define them how is torque defined the way or let's define moment of inertia first movement of inertia I well it may be a little overwhelming for you but I actually is something called tensor it's neither a vector and it's nor a scalar it's a tensor so we, we really want to re really do not want to talk about what tensor is but I is just a number when torque and direction or torque and omega share the same axis what does that mean which means if you have this kind of body and is rotating like this like this omega but you have calculated your torque uh, your in moment of inertia in this direction well moment of inertia depends on the axis the way you define your axis so first you have to define an axis and then calculate your moment of inertia tensor around that axis and then use that formula torque equals i alpha to calculate things but i is a tensor if this happens if the axis you have chosen for i does not match with the direction of angular velocity you can choose any axis you want for i it's, you are free to do that and at any time in physics you are free to choose any axis we want and the, 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 the end result will not change but to make uh, to, but you can certainly simplify things so so this formula where i is acting as a tensor and you can just accept it as a story you do not really have to understand what's going on in there but this thing tensor becomes a scalar if scalar is just a number scalar is just a number when you choose omega and i in the same direction which means you choose your axis such that you calculate i around that axis and the axis is also the axis for the angular velocity or angular acceleration up or down doesn't matter they should be on top of each other so here you can still write we will actually still write tau equals i alpha but now this you can just you can just actually this reduces to a number i mean the job of this thing reduces to a number because the system reduces to this system from this to that it reduces from here to here so tensor which actually looks like a matrix actually reduces to a just a number you do not have to worry what's happening so it just reduces to a number alpha is an acceleration and tau is an uh, uh, is the is a torque vector alpha is the acceleration vector i hope this is clear so this is how we define i and i actually is given as some uh, if it's if a system like this if you have let's say discrete particles 
and you and this is your axis let's say going inside the plane then your i this is the radius from the axis going in the plane and let's say the mass is mi and this whole system is moving like this or other way around and because it's moving like that you know omega should be out of the plane or in the plane so you have chosen an axis out of the plane or in the plane so you have chosen an axis for uh, for calculation of i in the plane or out of the plane so let's say this is the axis which is going in and if you calculate i about this axis then this is given as m i r i square sum over all the i's so you add over all the masses and if it's a continuous system that is you have this thing and uh, this is the axis you have chosen that means it's a continu continuous distribution of mass i is defined as uh, well defined as you have do a similar thing you have to take a small mass dm so this becomes dm r square over all area 